Hey there, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo. I'm your host for these uh, proceedings, these here shenanigans. And I want to assure you, first of all, <laughs> that there will be guests again <laughs> on this show. Um, coming off of the uh, the October 31 days of Halloween, you know, that's a lot of work. Also, it was just me on all of, the, all of those episodes. Found footage full last week was just me. This week, we're doing a review roundup. That, again, is just me. But I promise you, I am recording things with other people, so you will hear uh, other things than my voice in the not-too-distant future. Uh, but I appreciate you hanging with me as, you know, again, coming off of October, it, there's a lot of uh, work to be done to prep all the shows, and uh, the 31 Days of Halloween takes a lot of work as it happens. Uh, that that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, and I love it, and I'm glad that I do it every year, but I'm also a little bit glad it's over with, because then my schedule frees up uh, something fierce. Um, but yeah, in, and in this same month, my, my last day of the job I've had for like 15 years uh, is coming up pretty quick. As you're listening to this episode, I've got like a week and a half left, uh, which will, you know... Hopefully, allow me to do a little bit of extra recording uh, in December, which is kind of the plan, even though we're doing some traveling. Um, you know, and, and you know, they get into things. Uh, and I won't be going to school uh, pretty soon, which is another thing that takes an enormous amount of time. But I'm, a, I'm just about uh, graduated with my degree, so I can start teaching, which is great. But anyway, all of that to say... Um, you know, uh, the weekly schedule will continue. I'll fit in more as I can. And, and again, another, uh, thank you for just sticking around. I appreciate it. It's an awful nice of you. Uh, but let's, let's get to the meat of this. Uh, it, just because I don't have a guest doesn't mean I haven't been watching movies. Uh, that's what to do. That's my, one of my favorite things. I like, I like watching movies and I like talking about them. So let's, uh, let's talk about three movies that are recent releases, because this is the time of year, right, when I'm, I'm starting to catch up on all the 2022 releases, so I can start to formulate a rough idea of what my end of year list is going to look like. And I want to talk about three movies today uh, that are kind of of a stripe, in that they all deal with women's issues to some degree. Um, some I would say more so than others, but there there is a running theme through all of them about sort of being heard uh, to, to some extent. And so let's start with uh, Watcher, which is uh, a movie um, starring uh, Micah Monroe, I believe is uh, is the actress's name. Uh, who was from, you know, It Follows and has been in a, a ton of stuff since and it is very, very good. And uh, this is directed by Chloe Okuno. Uh, she wrote the script uh, along with, I think the, the credit is like based on a script by Zach Ford. So uh, apparently this was a, a script floating around that when she was attached, she rewrote uh, pretty extensively. So the basic premise of it is that uh, Micah Monroe plays a girl named Julia, a young woman, who follows her husband to Bucharest. And uh, he is from there. She joins him as he's, you know, pursuing a job opportunity, essentially. And she doesn't speak the language, and she is not working. So she has a little too much time on her hands. And as she, in a very rear window style kind of situation, she ends up just kind of looking out her back window at the building across the street. And there she sees a, a, a guy looking at her. And then she begins to see this same guy uh, at the grocery store and on the train and, you know, essentially following her around. And against the backdrop of this is set a serial killer who is uh, brutally murdering women. And so much of the movie is uh, Micah Monroe being followed, telling people that this guy is a creep, 
Uh, yeah, occasionally the police get involved and there's no evidence that the guy's up to anything. And in fact, a lot of the evidence suggests that she is going a little cuckoo and has too much time on her hands. And, you know, all, all of those things that happens when you are alone and isolated in a new foreign city. And, uh, you know, one thing leads to another and the, you know, chaos ensues. Uh... It, it the chaos does not ensue though until the last I don't know 15 minutes of this movie and but so here here is my the the thing I really like about Watcher is that Watcher is very much a a slow burn kind of movie and I I don't mind a slow burn movie but it is the slowest of slow burns like you kind of know where this movie's going pretty much from the the first time that Michael Monroe sees this dude in a window. Um, that's not to say that it's bad. I don't, in fact, I like the movie, but I feel also like this is a thing that we've seen before. Uh, I don't think that the movie's doing anything that new. You know, there are a number of films, uh, and some of which we'll talk about on this very episode, that are sort of about the same thing of, of a woman saying, Hey, I am being threatened and harassed and haunted by this creep and essentially being ignored. Um, you know, the, what the movie does, the spin that it puts on it is it places her in a situation where it's easy to not believe her because of her particular situation of being in this new place and and not being um familiar with the language and and not being able to communicate and there are no subtitles in the movie uh which i like because it makes you feel as isolated as her when people around her are speaking a different language and you're like i don't i don't know what they're saying she doesn't know what they're saying it's really uh off-putting um but all you know so the movie does a lot of things right it's incredibly sterile. Like the the performances are very are very cool, uh, and I don't mean that in as a description of it being hip or whatever. I mean that everyone plays it very very calm, very uh, detached, very distant, and uh, it makes the movie feel longer than it is. You know, the movie itself is only like 90 minutes, but ugh, it is, it, it, it feels like a, a bit of a slog at times, even though it's beautifully shot and it's beautifully performed. Michael Monroe is fantastic in it. Um, and, you know, as are the supporting cast, like everybody is very good in it. It, j like I said, it, it would be more interesting as a slow burn movie if it didn't feel so predictable if you didn't know where it was going and you were left you know following this kind of slow moving train towards a conclusion that you weren't sure of and there was really only one thing i was you know conflicted about with the ending it, it, it was more of a well what is the condition of the final character at the end of this film um rather than what's going to happen because I felt like the what's going to happen was inevitable and when you are watching a movie that feels like it has an inevitable ending it you need something more than this very slow paced methodical studious kind of approach to the material and I again this is all uh, personal preference obviously I there are people who are going to see Watcher and I've seen a lot of reviews of it where people are really over the top for it and really love it. I wish I could have gotten there with it, um, but I just did not feel like it had a, like an internal engine to, to kind of propel me through the movie. It felt like I was the one dragging myself to the end of this movie uh, over the finish line. And I'm glad I saw it. And I, I again, I think it's, it's well shot. It's well performed. Um, it, it has an... It has something to say, although I don't think that what it's saying is particularly fresh uh, at this point. I think there have been a number of movies that have have traveled this same terrain, 
Um, but I don't like my criticisms of it are basically it's slow. It's it's a little off putting in its pacing. Uh, but everything else about it is worthwhile. And so I kind of come down about a three out of five stars with this movie. Um, just because I, w I wish it were a little more... Not fun, that's the wrong way to put it. I wish I wish it were a little more engaging. And, and it drew the, the viewer in instead of keeping this cold and detached sort of, you know placing you the viewer as the role of the watcher in some cases and and that is certainly a valid way to go with the movie but it also means that it's a little dull at times you know i know i know where this is all going let's get there already uh so watcher is available on shutter as well as uh the other streaming services um if what i've said has put you off uh sorry about that um but it's, you know, we're going to talk about some other movies on this list that deal with some of the same stuff and I think are better movies. And, you know, if, like Watcher is one of those to get around to, I would say. Uh, but let, let's get to uh, another Shudder film, which is the movie Resurrection, uh, which stars Rebecca Hall and Tim Roth. And... It's not exactly the same kind of thematic material as Watcher, but it's in the ballpark. Where Rebecca Hall plays this, uh, a businesswoman, and she has a, a daughter who's about to go off to college. And she begins to see an ex of hers from when she was a young woman, played by Tim Roth. And... He was very manipulative. Uh, he was abusive when they were dating when she was a younger woman. And so she starts to lose her shit a little bit about this guy uh, following her around. And um, the th <sighs> all right. So this is not a fast paced movie, but it's not the slow burn of Watcher. It, it, it is a movie that builds very steadily towards a conclusion that again I felt like I knew it was coming but I wasn't certain of that because the movie plays um so so much with expectation and what is real and what is not real and that's the thing that's kind of fascinating about resurrection um first of all it's Rebecca Hall's performance Rebecca Hall is amazing in resurrection uh, not so long ago, what last year she was in, um, the night house and has become this, I don't, I hesitate to say like a modern day scream queen because it's not that kind of movie. Like she's in these very thoughtful, very good horror movies and resurrection. You can make an argument that resurrection is not even a horror film, that it's more of a psychological drama and you're not wrong about that until it gets to a place at the end of the movie where you're like well this is really unpleasant um and also what is real and and that's the thing like resurrection feels like a polanski movie you know like um you know something like repulsion or rosemary's baby where there there's this growing sense of paranoia and you don't really know like is Rebecca Hall completely losing her mind or is Tim Roth that manipulative? You know, there's one scene in particular where she is in a park. It's kind of early on once she starts seeing him and she decides that she's going to confront him and she crosses the park, goes to him and is like, stay the fuck away from me. And he's like, what are you, what are you talking about? You came over here to talk to me. And I don't know who you are. And she's like, you, you, you absolutely know who I am and I want you to stay away from me. And so there are moments where he seems to know her in this conversation and moments where he doesn't. And as a viewer, you're asking yourself, like, is she actually talking to someone else that she thinks is this guy? That he looks like this old, you know, abusive boyfriend of hers or... 
is it a completely different person and she's just in, you know like superimposing his face on this person is she cracking up to that extent and all of this kind of begins with a woman telling her about a, an abusive relationship which absolutely begs the question is was you know that a triggering event where all of a sudden she starts to have these visions of this old boyfriend because she is now reliving the, uh, this past trauma and the weirder part of all of this is that w she later confesses to this same employee who has, has talked to her about, you know, this abusive boyfriend of hers. Um, Rebecca Hall tells her the story of that relationship. And it ends in a place where, like, oh, she got pregnant and she had this baby named Ben. And Tim Roth, as the boyfriend, ate the baby and left only a, a few fingers and told her, hey, I'm keeping this baby alive inside of me. And so if you want to be, and this is all your fault, and if you want to keep this baby, you have to stay with me because I'm the one keeping the baby alive. Hence the, you know, resurrection thing uh, of the title. And it's, it's a crazy thing to say to someone because you're like, well, that's just not how babies work <laughs> or, you know, uh, that's not how any of this works. But Rebecca Hall, it, you know, it's the example of being so psychologically manipulated that you believe crazy things because you've just been so conditioned um, that you're believing this, this crazy partner of yours, despite how insane what is being said is and so that is where resurrection kind of lives it lives in that in-between place of is she really seeing tim roth if so is his manipulations of saying hey i want you to do these things for me otherwise i'm just going to cut the baby that i'm keeping inside me loose and it will die for real and despite the fact that you've had this other child and try to construct this life, none of that matters because I know you better than anybody. And what really matters is this baby Ben and I can bring him back to you, but you're going to have to do what I say. And is that real? Is that something that she's constructed constructed? Is it real that he's come back, but he's not actually making these statements about this baby that is living in his belly is all of that real. And you know, it, it, and again, like getting to how this relates to the watcher, there are moments where she's telling people around her, like this guy has come back. He's dangerous. I need to keep my daughter away from her. And her daughter thinks that she is going crazy and is telling her like, you need to see somebody you are not well. And we, as the viewer don't know if that's true or not. I suspect it is where I come down on this movie is that you are watching the mental breakdown of a woman who has this very, you know, carefully constructed life and psyche that is upset when these memories come back and that she essentially like this past trauma just gets on top of her and she begins like seeing things and, you know, and you know, we could talk about the ending if, if, for those of you who have seen Resurrection, please drop by the Discord. There will be a link to the Discord server on this post. Uh, drop by the Discord and we'll talk about the ending. Uh, I don't want to spoil it here because it's something that I feel like everybody should see. And I don't know exactly what the ending suggests. I kind of think that it is her, again, a construction that is completely taking place in her mind and that there, there is a moment of self-awareness of that. Um, but we'll see, you know, I would like to hear other people's thoughts on, on what exactly the end of resurrection is trying to get at. Um, it is a very unusual movie. Uh, like I said, there, as you're watching, even though it's on shutter, there are going to be long stretches of the movie where you're going to ask yourself, how exactly is this a horror movie? And I think it gets there. I mean, it's sort of a light horror movie. It's more a psychological thriller. Uh, I, I would probably argue it, there is something vaguely Cronenbergian about this movie. 
and uh, that's never a bad thing. Um, so yeah, I, Resurrection I think is very solid um, because of some slow pacing. I, I ding it a little bit for that. But I think as I, even as I'm talking about it, like my estimation of the movie is rising because it is so interesting and it's a great discussion movie of like, what did you think about this scene? And, you know, what was going on here? And was this really a thing that happened in, you know, the real world of the movie? Or was this something that took place entirely in Rebecca Hall's mind? Uh, Tim Roth who is is getting up there like watching Tim Roth it's like well you're getting kind of old Tim Roth which makes me feel really old I remember back in the day when you were in in Reservoir Dogs and now you are no longer that young man you're an old man like me and that doesn't seem cool uh but he's fantastic in it uh it, like playing this sleazy former boyfriend and again how much of it is real is is left up to the viewer to decide in some ways but his manipulations, you're like, oh, I totally see why he was able to convince Rebecca Hall as a young woman um, of, of these kind of crazy ideas. Because he's so matter of fact and he's so good at it. You know, he's so Tim Roth. Uh, it's great. It's great. Uh, Resurrection, I'm giving a four out of five stars. Uh, like I said, you are going to have moments where you're like, where's this movie going? And why is like, it, it, it does feel like a bit of a slow burn, although not nearly as slow a burn as watcher. Uh, but I think just with the performance of Tim Roth, Rebecca Hall and, and where the movie gets to and the interesting questions that it raises, I, I think this is a, a real solid four star kind of movie. Um, I thought it was great. All right. So let's do one more that, is also in the wheelhouse of here is a woman under threat um and you know what exactly is going on and i'm gonna say oh how how spoiler spoilery do we want to get with this but all right so let's talk about barbarian and i'm just gonna say right now um i give this movie four and a half out of five stars you should see the Barbarian, absolutely. It's one of the more interesting and audacious uh, horror movies of 2022. And uh, if you have not seen it, just stop the podcast right now. Because uh, I'm not going to super spoil the movie. But also, I'm going to talk around some stuff that is going to suggest beats of the movie. And you should know as little as possible about Barbarian going into it because a lot of the fun of the movie is watching its moves um okay that said you have been duly warned if you are listening past this point you have either seen barbarian uh which good for you uh welcome to the party pal or you have um decided that you do not care enough about spoilers uh that it's not going to diminish your enjoyment of barbarian so there you go all right, so Barbarian. Uh, this is directed by Zach Kreger, is the guy's name. Um, and uh, he... So, I think this is his first feature uh, that he has directed. Uh, well, he co-directed a movie called Miss March back in 2009, which I vaguely remember. But anyway... Uh, Barbarian is a, a real coming out party for Zach Kreger. Uh, if he wants to do more like this, he absolutely can. So the, the premise of Barbarian is that a young woman played by Georgina Campbell shows up at an Airbnb late at night. It's in a bad neighborhood in Detroit. And, uh, when she gets there, she realizes that there's somebody else inside. Um, somebody that has the key and says, Hey, by the way, uh, I also rented this place and, and, you know, we somehow got double booked. Like I got, I, I got my reservation on home finder. You got it on Airbnb. Somebody double booked this place and the stranger played by Bill Skarsgård, um, is like convincing, but convincing in a way that makes you feel like he's up to some some shit. 
you know, like he knows a little too much uh, about her or about the things that she's interested in. Um, he's a little too accommodating, a little too nice. You know, there's a great moment where he offers her some tea and she refuses. And then later he's like, hey, I'm going to open some wine. And how about I just open this in front of you because I understand this situation and you're here. You don't know me. I don't know you. I'm, I'm, you can see that I'm not slipping anything into your drink. Do you want a glass of wine? And it, you know, but it sets up that premise early of who do you trust? And women in particular, and they talk about this in the movie that women in particular are in a position where they can't just trust that somebody has their best interests at heart. Because that's unfortunately not the way of the world and it's not how women have been conditioned. Like, women in modern context are, you know, afraid to go on a run by themselves at night. Uh, and, you know, like, for good reason. Like, bad shit happens to women at a disproportionate rate. Like, men don't have to m make those same value judgments, you know? Like, men, as a rule, don't have to hold their keys in their hand in a defensive way because they're afraid somebody's going to follow them to their car. The movie is very much about like what is what is it about this culture and and how women can be placed against other women uh in some cases, but at the at the end of the day, the root of it all is the fact that it's because women are preyed upon in a way that doesn't exist for men. And it's something, like I said, Bill Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell have this conversation about it. And, um, you know, Georgina Campbell is a capable woman. It's like, I can take care of myself, you know, but I'm also not stupid. I'm not going to do anything foolish. And Bill Skarsgård seems like a nice enough guy. Um, so, you know, she lets her guard down a little bit and, and then the movie makes a left turn and the movie that you think you are watching is not actually the movie you, you think that, that you ultimately are watching and it becomes something very, very different, um, without losing that theme though, like it is still a movie about how women are preyed upon the effects of that and how, um, how women survive that, you know, how do you, how do you survive a situation where it, you know, like something as simple as, um, in a later scene of a, a woman letting a guy come into her home to check the gas. Um, uh, and as the audience, we know that what is happening is he is sizing up his ability to, to, uh, to brutalize her. And, it it's really horrifying. Um, so Georgina Campbell's fantastic in this. Bill Skarsgård is really great in it. Justin Long shows up about mm, a third of the way through the movie. Kind of the beginning of the second act is Justin Long appearing in the film, and his character um, is absolutely fantastic. Justin Long is great in this. Uh, he is uh, he like. The, the role he plays, again, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers for just the basics of his character, but it, it lets you know a little bit of, of the plot. And uh, if, if you haven't seen Barbarian, please, please, please stop this right now. Go watch Barbarian and then come back and listen to this. But um, Justin Long plays a uh, uh, an actor who gets accused of sexual harassment. And... It's an interesting take on this situation because he's, you know, like on, on the one hand, he's kind of a typical L.A. douchebag where he's like, well, you know, it, like he calls her up and is like, look, I'm so sorry if you felt that that situation was different than I read. It's just it's weird that two people can have two different uh, memories of the same event and that kind of thing. And he he is wrestling through the movie with whether or not he is a bad person. And in fact, ask that question, am I a bad person or am I a good person that did a bad thing? 
And I think the movie answers that pretty definitively at a certain point uh, of, of whether or not he is actually a redeemable character. But it's like his performance is so good. It's so funny. And uh, I, I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> his relationship with one of the other male characters in the movie and, and sort of understanding that these are kind of the same guy in in a lot of ways. But, I, I, you know, you, what you're doing with Barbarian is you're seeing a number of the ways that men uh, stalk and brutalize women. And sometimes it is extreme, sometimes it is more subtle, but it is a thing that women always have to be aware of. And um, and, and sort of strip to the basics, a, a woman still wants to be a nurturer to some extent. And, you know, that, that's oversimplifying uh, some of what's going on in Barbarian. But it, it's a fascinating look at this kind of thing. Um, you know, the themes are there. It is, it is textually very rich. It is a movie that you could certainly write papers about, but unlike Watcher and, uh, Resurrection that we talked about earlier, the pace of this movie is fucking crazy. It is so quick for being a movie that's like an hour, 30, hour, 40 long, it goes places, it has moves, it, it you don't ever know entirely what to expect out of this film. Um, it is occasionally very gory and very brutal. Uh, it is a movie that when I'm putting together an end of year list, it is going to be on that list. Uh, I think it's a, a terrific film. And it's one of those that, you know, was hyped going into it. And at the moment that it makes its turn and becomes something other than you, what you think the movie is going to be, I was like, well, believe the hype, because that was shocking. And now that I'm in this other movie that I did not think I was going to be in, I'm having so much fun. And that's the other thing for the, the themes of this movie being as heavy as they are, and the movie discussing some very real world issues and some very delicate real world issues um it does it with a really deft touch while still being a balls out horror movie and i loved it i love barbarian like i said this is a four and a half out of five stars for me um might be a five stars i'm just real like i'm reticent to give a movie five stars before i've had a chance to see it multiple times and sort of live with it for a couple of years like, I, you know, Halloween didn't make five stars for a long time for me, uh, which is crazy because that's a five star movie. That's a brilliant horror film. And it took me a long time to even give that five stars. You know, the thing's different. The thing is one of my favorite movies ever. But it's, it's a terrific, terrific, terrific film. Uh, Richard Brake shows up and uh, is suitably creepy and scary. And I, yeah, I, I think Barbarian is an incredibly uh, successful movie um, and, and worth your time. Uh, it is uh, one of the best of the year, I think. Your mileage, of course, may vary. This is uh, uh, always, you know, a subjective form. And as you're listening to this, I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. I hope if you have seen it, um, that you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you haven't, I don't want to overhype it too much, but also I feel like you should see Barbarian and decide for yourself if, you know, the, the twists of it and the turns of it are as much fun as I thought they were. Um, there's a great scene with Justin Long measuring uh, the, this long hallway and these, you know, clearly disgusting cells. And it... You know, it's one of those things where I'm like, this is such a beautiful, it's a joke, but it's also horrifying, and yeah, I loved it. I loved it so much. Um, all right, so that's going to do it. Th those are the three films that I wanted to talk about. Uh, like I said, strangely thematically similar in some ways, uh, and and of growing quality. You know, I want to land on Barbarian, because I, I think it's the, the real banger of the three, although I think Res Resurrection's very good. Uh, so, 
Um, if you want to discuss these with me, and I would love to hear your thoughts on these movies, then please, 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 uh, you can do so by coming by uh, the Discord server. Uh, if you go to legionpodcasts.com, uh, you can find uh, this year uh, post. And uh, as part of the post, there will be links to the social media networks, um, the Discord server, and, and the Facebook channel. Like The Facebook I update uh, pretty regular, and I check in to do scheduling and that kind of thing at least once every day or two. Uh, so if you leave me a message there, I will definitely see it. Uh, if you want to get a, a quick response and actually have a discussion, drop by the Discord server, um, and I am, I am on that all the time. Uh, so, uh, you know, eh, Discord's not totally social media, and that's kind of what I like about it. At any rate, um, I appreciate you uh, hanging in there with Dark Parade. The next episode is going to be a What You Watchin' with Jamie Jenkins. Uh, Jimmy Sammons. There you go. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, you will hear other voices than my own on the next episode. We've got that. We've got a Heart of Horror coming up. We've got a regular episode with uh, Richard Glenn Schmidt coming up. Uh, lots of stuff on the way. So, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for sticking with us through the 31 days of Halloween and through a couple of weeks of, you know, these sort of solo episodes as I'm getting everything else organized. And, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time uh, for a new episode uh, with another human being as part of it. And thank you, as always, for joining the Dark Parade. See you then. <laughs>